Hello and welcome back to another episode of the PVM focused Ultimate Iron Man. In the last episode, we used up all of our herbs and built up a giant potion stack so that we can start to get into various PVM content. And one of the first things we're going to take on is the Chambers of Zeric. But before we can get into that, we do need to do a little bit more preparation. I'm going to be making some adjustments to the audio in this video and other videos going forward, so please let me know in the comments section below if the audio levels, the quality, everything around that sounds good. And as always, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it, and I hope you enjoy. Well, that's pretty funny. 12 kills in, and we get a curved bone from Mole. Yeah, that is something. We're just doing a few mole kills right now because we do need to get some seeds in particular that are for the diary. So we need a watermelon seed or well, we need at least three. And then we also need to get a willow seed. And those are relatively common from the Weissen bird's nest. Yeah, so we actually ended up getting the watermelon seeds, which is great. And now we just need to get the willow tree seed and then we'll be good to go for the medium diary for the most part. Okay, and I believe this is rat catchers completed. So we didn't have to actually complete the quest in order to do the diary. Yeah, so there is a visit the Port Sarum rat pits, but you technically don't have to actually complete the quest in order to get here. You have to do just a tiny part of it, about maybe like half of it. But honestly, like the final half of it is very quick. So I figured might as well just complete it. And this all unlocks the Wily Hellcat, which is uh, great to have later on. This is good. We have the Scarecrow done. And if we place it there, that is a medium task completed. The game is a little unplayable lately. Okay, so we finally got the Willow Seed. So I'm going to go plant that right now, actually. Okay, so if you didn't know, you can actually pay to protect a willow seedling. So we can, and I'm just going to do ultra compost because I don't know if that affects the branches or not, but we're just going to plant this um, and then we can pay with one basket of apples and that means it is good to go. Okay, so that's Grim Tales completed and Grim Tales unlocks us the dwarven helmet which i believe we need to equip now in a certain area we actually need to go equip it in the dwarven mines and that is a hard task completed we are just one task away from the medium being completed and the two tasks that are going to take us the probably most amount of time to complete now so we're gonna go get ready for the the mother load mine and then yeah should be good to go we're gonna start working on farm runs as well but basically we got our six willow branches so that means we can weave a basket and this should be the final task of the medium diary so i guess just a quick update uh we did get 70 mining uh, i was looking up how many pay dirt i guess was the average for getting to 180 golden nuggets and it's said on the wiki that it was 6750 on average so we're already making solid progress and it's going actually a bit faster than i thought it would okay so with this pay sack load thing we got to 94 golden nuggets which actually puts us directly over 50 percent of the way to completing this goal which is really nice all right, that is 73 mining, which is beyond what we were kind of working towards, I guess. 72 was really the end goal, but I think we'll probably get close to 74 by the time we finish this. We are at 146 golden nuggets, and that is a farming level. We are at 79 now, so that's nice. Um, 80 would look cool because it would just be a flat number, um, but 79 is good. I think farming is also kind of a great skill to have, uh, especially for Chambers of Zeric. Um, other than that, though, I mean, there isn't a whole lot of things we need from farming in terms of helping us with PVM. And we missed the level, but that is 74 mining. So just over a million experience in the skill. Pretty crazy. All right. With that collection, we are now at 180 golden nuggets. So that means we can buy the full prospector set, which is what we need in order to really complete this diary. So the nice part about this is that we can always sell it back um, in the future if we want to gain access to the upper level because that's typically better when you're doing a decent amount of mother load mine. So if we're ever coming back for that, we can definitely do that. And um, in the meantime, we can actually just store it in the house, which is nice. So we do want to buy 
one of each piece and there we go 180 and that is the full set it actually looks really cool i do like the mining set um compared to some of the other ones i believe the mining set is the same as pretty much every other skilling set which is that it gives a 2.5 percent boost when fully equipped so i think now if we walk into the mining guild we should complete a hard task of the valley diary which is really good that puts us at one task away and like I mentioned, you can store this in the house. Yeah, you can store it in the house, which is really nice. Just like pretty much every other skilling outfit, I believe. Don't plan to do mining again for a long time. And if I do, I'll probably just end up selling it for um, some of the, you know, golden nuggets back. And then I can buy the upper level, like I mentioned. This should give us 56 rune crafting. So this means we can complete the Falador Hard Diary. We need to go and get set up for that. Now, I <laughs> I made a mistake. Uh, it's been a while since I've had to like do something where I need my entire inventory. And because of that, I need to go and collect all my stuff again and then do this one more time because I pulled out my rune pouch and my coins and I need a full 28 spaces in order to do this. Okay, we're here at the Mind Altar, and I believe if we craft runes, that is it. We completed the Falador Hard Diary, which is extremely good for us because that means that we can start to kill the giant mole more efficiently and start to make some brews, which is what we've been, you know, working towards. So this is perfect because... This kind of lined up with our herb lore as well because we are 11k away and this will give us a 15,000 experience lamp, which is perfect. It's going to put us right at 81, which means we're ready to go. We should have this completed and we'll be wanting our reward. And there we go. This has a couple of different things. We can obviously recharge our prayer. I believe it is still 50% once a day so yeah with the reward we can use this experience lamp directly into herb lore for 15k and that's going to put us at 81 which allows us to make sourdome and brews that's exactly what we need and that's perfect uh so i guess i was wrong you don't actually need to check the shield i think you used to if i'm remembering correctly but now the giant mole will basically always have a permanent indicator on it and that will tell you where to go, which is nice. We're going to get started. Um, we are starting off at AC Mole. I think that should tell us. We're starting off at 23 KC. We did a little bit because we were trying to get a seed before, but turned out being a bad idea. All right, so we got all the mole skins, mole parts that we need to actually make our brews. And these are worth a lot of GP. Kind of crazy that this is worth... 10 million GP by itself. All right, so we have gotten our gear into Hispori, so now we have some free space, and I think we can turn these all in and see what we get. Okay, so yeah, we get three boxes, and I believe we can check them all, so let's see. So majority of the boxes are seeds, 712. And then we have some that are rings and then some that are empty. So we'll be doing the empties first. These are just straight up making brews, no thinking involved. And then the rings we're just going to be dropping on. I, I could technically enchant the sapphires, which would be actually kind of nice. So maybe I'll think about that in a second, a little bit further. But um, the seeds is going to be the more complicated because... We're gonna have to decide what seeds we want to keep and then we have the seed box here to hold them while we make so handling the seeds is going to be probably the most difficult part of doing brews i'll need to look at the actual drop table of these seeds because they are slightly different than regular uh seed nests i believe so with that being said we're gonna start to get into it these will be very quick All right, so we already finished our uh, empty nests, and now we can move on to the ring nests. And again, this is not too many, 274. So this one should actually be pretty quick because I did decide I'm just going to drop all the rings and jewelry because 
Like I said, if I was being absolutely most efficient, it would probably be a good idea to enchant the Rings of Recoil and then put those into my Ring of Suffering since I'm holding that. However, it really isn't that hard to get charges even on Ultimate Iron Man. Basically, when my inventory fills up, I can just extract the nests and then I can come straight here, do four doses. I can do one doses. I can click back to my spot and then I can just pull the rings out and then drop the rings and then unnote my potions and then we're good to go. So we have finished the ring boxes and now all that we have left is the seed boxes. So I think that in terms of the seeds that get dropped, it's basically the same as regular bird's nest. However, the drop rates of many of the seeds have changed and a lot of them are higher than they are from a regular bird's nest from woodcutting. Um, but particularly the ones we're going to keep are definitely limpwort seeds. This will be really good because originally I had mentioned probably in a previous clip that I wasn't planning on finishing my quorums or anything, but this will actually be perfect because then I will be able to do them. Um, and then outside of that, obviously like any, you know, big tree seeds like magics and use anything below that, probably not. Um, and then of course, Ranar and Snapdragon seeds as well. Those are super critical. Yeah, so I'm going to unequip the lance just to fill the, the spots and then this should be good again for doing the four decant to one decant method. Someone just dropped a Sardomen sword. Interesting. All right, so we finished up all of our potions. We made 3.2k Sardomen brew doses, which is pretty nice. That should last us a decent amount of time. It's about 6 million GP. And then in terms of the seed box, we actually got a ton of limpert seeds it's kind of crazy um and then some other seeds we'll start to plant right now and then we are going to go get prepared to do some raids okay so we completed our first raid and uh we ended up getting 750 soul runes and 28 grimy toad flax which is awesome uh, it was actually a lot of fun doing the first raid even though I, I feel really rusty like i had to basically think about all my gear switches with all that being said though it was awesome it was a great experience i just did we do raids and i just mentioned that i am below the minimum gear requirement okay and so i just wanted to make a clip talking about something i'm not sure other ultimate iron man might know or be aware of but dropping items in raids is kind of important to understand because you can actually lose your items fairly simply. You can lose your items if you are kicked from the raid. So anything you drop, not just potions, but any item that is on the ground, if you get kicked from the raid, you will lose the item. And so it is obviously important to be cautious when you're doing that uh, or when you're doing anything in the raid, like dropping items. Yeah, so we are going to kill some Aviancies and we're gonna do this because well, one, we need to get Addy Bars to make Adamant. And I guess we can also make some Adamant Darts and just see how much of a difference we feel while doing raids. Also, the one plus side of doing this and taking our time is that we actually have a chance of getting Runite Limbs. Aviancies have a 1 in 128 drop for the Runite Limbs, which is nice because, I mean, if we end up getting it somehow before we get, you know, uh, like a thousand or uh, a thousand bolts and like a thousand darts, uh, that'll be nice because then we won't have to go and do the uh, deranged archaeologist, I believe it is, on the volcanic mountain. All right, so uh, just an update. We got the runite limbs from Aviancy's last night. Um, I woke up this morning. I'm going to finish off a little bit more dart tips, probably get myself to about like at least a thousand total just so I can test it if I want to. Um, and if I obviously want to commit and make more in the future, then this isn't really that bad. Okay, so we should be able to make a crossbow string with sinew. And then we can apply that to our rune crossbow. And it's been a while. We did alk this a long time ago. Uh, I didn't think I was going to have a real use for it after I got the blowpipe. But it appears that it would actually still be really good in raids. And especially with ruby bolts enchanted. So, okay, so I think this is what we're working with. Pretty much the same exact setup, except instead of the... Blowpipe, we'll be using the rune crossbow, and we got ruby bolt enchanted. Yeah, that's basically it. I mean, I'm gonna go I have to store some of these potions again so I don't hold the entire stack on me, but this is pretty much it, and uh, not much has changed. I think it's fine. 
Okay, so I deposited some potions. We're just going to keep a couple hundred for now. Yeah, we will make an inventory setup real quick, and then I will kind of see and play around with what we have. 